Okay, project management. We're looking at project risk in this series of lectures. And um, it's unsurprising that we have risk on projects because if you remember our very definition of a project is that it's unique. And if it's unique in some way, that implies we haven't done something before, which must imply it is risky. So the objectives of this lecture are to look at ways of identifying risk in our project management plans, of assessing that risk, and looking for ways of controlling or managing that risk. Now then, here's a sneak peek of the big picture lecture which is coming up. This is what I like to refer to as project management on a page. And I'm putting it here because I'm saying, actually, we've nearly finished our planning process. We've done the project appraisal, the financial technical appraisal. We've talked to the senior managers to get their support. We've defined the objectives in the project specification. We know what we're doing from the work breakdown structure. Uh, we know who is doing it in the responsibility matrix. And we know how much it's costing in the cost account. We know the sequence of activities in the dependency chart. We know where the critical path is and how much float there is on the non-critical items. We have a Gantt chart and we've done a resource analysis on our project. So now's the time to examine these plans and identify the risks and then assess the risks and control the risks. So we'll be looking at this big picture lecture later in the module. Um, now, we're trying to determine what risk is, and we often get into trouble thinking about uncertainty. So I've tried to put this slide up to sort of say, well, we start off with the feasibility of the project, the, the technical feasibility and the commercial feasibility. And some things um, are, are certain, uh, the laws of physics or the purchase price of something. And some things will be uncertain, and we don't really know about them. Well, it might be that we can do some sensitivity analysis or some measurements to try and get, gain some knowledge about these uncertain things. And I'm suggesting when we have this knowledge, uh, we can actually treat this as a risk because we can, uh, having identified it, we can assess it because it's measurable in some way, and we can deal with it. We can manage that risk or uncertainty. The problem comes with the uncertainty that is unmeasurable. What we're saying is, is we really don't know about this. And there's an old saying in project management, you know, it's not what you know that will catch you out, it's what you don't know that you don't know. So what do we mean by risk? I mean, the easy things to think about is being late in your projects or going over budget, things going wrong. Uh, but actually, there's a risk that things could be early, or you could be under budget. Things could go better than you expect. Now, the way we use the word risk and chance in the English language, we, we usually use risks to mean negative, bad news. There is a risk of a delay on the motorway. But sometimes we use the word chance there. There is a chance of a delay on the motorway. But we never use the word risk for good news. There is a risk I will win the lottery, for instance. So my definition of risk is being off plan. Now, you could be early or you could be late, but you are off plan, and both are risks. Now, if you're late, that's bad news. There's a chance you're early, that's good news, but you are off plan. And equally, if you're going to identify a risk of being late, what are you going to do to stop that happening? What are you going to do if it happens? You ought to think about, well, what if we are early? How can I encourage that to happen? And if that does happen, how can I capitalize on that? This is our risk management process, our overall risk management process. And the next three lecture clips will look at identifying risk, assessing risk, and controlling risk. There are three main steps. You need to identify the risks, otherwise you've got nothing to assess. Having identified the risks, clearly you must assess them, and some of the risks will be really important, so you need to prevent them from happening, or have plans in place to mitigate if it does happen. So for instance, you might find fire extinguishers around the building, or you might back up your data as a prevention in case something goes wrong. Uh, why do we have risk in projects? 
Well, apart from the fact that projects are by very definition unique and therefore risky, in the commercial world, we are pressurized by our management to be faster, better, cheaper. Uh, faster than we did it ourselves last time, better and cheaper than we did it last time, but faster than our competitors and cheaper than our competitors. And this is inevitably going to lead to corners being cut on the projects and us taking risks. A second reason for having risks in projects is maybe we've become complacent. If you've got a really difficult project, you're going to put your really experienced project managers onto that project, which means your easy projects you're going to give to the new graduates. However, the company's got to realize that that project is not easy for the new graduate. So sometimes those runner projects, the ones that should be easy, uh, we get a little bit complacent with them. We don't plan them in enough detail, and we don't do proper risk management on them. So these could be reasons why we're having risk in our projects. Finally, I just want to separate issues from risks. A project issue is currently happening, and you need to deal with it. Something has happened, and it has been raised as an issue. And a project manager often has an issue log, a list of issues that are ongoing and they're working on. And you would discuss current issues at a project meeting. A project risk is something that might happen. And our task here is to be a proactive project manager to prevent that from happening. Have plans in place to mitigate it if it does happen. So this was the introduction to project risk. We're now going to have a look at a, a case study and then look at ways of identifying risks, assessing risks, and managing risks.